Elon Musk unveiled Tesla's upcoming humanoid robot, dubbed TeslaBot, at Tesla AI Day on August 19, 2021. While the bot is only a concept right now, they'll supposedly have a prototype arrive as soon as 2022. Is this realistic from a hardware and software perspective? How could Tesla achieve this? What are the potential benefits of having Tesla bots operating among us at scale? We'll explore those questions in this video after a brief summary of what was announced. The AI Day presentation consisted primarily of a technical deep dive into Tesla's current technology stack, which offered glimpses into the progress they've made over the past year in solving full self-driving. I'll talk a little bit about these technical details later when addressing Tesla bot's feasibility, but first let's summarize the short segment about TeslaBot and go over some of Elon's reasons for why this makes sense for the company. Elon stated that Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because Tesla cars are basically semi-sentient robots on wheels. Given Tesla's extensive work on perception, prediction, and planning algorithms as it relates to autonomous vehicles, it makes sense to apply that set of resources to a humanoid form, which would have similar perception and prediction challenges. Quick disclaimer. Overall, it was clear from the presentation that this short segment on TeslaBot was primarily intended to promote hiring at Tesla, because while they have plenty of talent dedicated to creating robots on wheels, bipedal robots require additional specialized talent. This is far from a solved problem, as people have gladly pointed out all across the internet. If these technical hurdles are overcome, however, this can help humanity begin to solve some of the pain points that capitalism and industrialization have introduced. Elon's initial focus would be on eliminating dangerous, repetitive, or boring tasks. The ultimate goal here, according to Elon, is supporting a labor economy that is trending more and more towards some form of universal basic income. Plus, it would make sense to send humanoid robots on uncrewed missions to other planets and moons as we finally begin to colonize the solar system. I'll talk about some of these potential benefits and more later in the video. Let's consider how feasible a TeslaBot is given today's technology. When considering the current state of the art of humanoid bipedal robotics, the most obvious examples of feasibility are Boston Dynamics and Agility Robotics. Boston Dynamics' Atlas robot is designed to be a highly capable biped that can demonstrate impressive feats of mobility, including leaps and somersaults. Actuation is done with hydraulic joints, while Tesla Bot will likely use electric motors. At 4'11 and 192 pounds, it's certainly in the ballpark of the 5'8, 125 pound Tesla Bot prototype, albeit a bit more athletic. Fitting the actuators for TeslaBot and its slim form factor will likely be a significant challenge, but not much was announced about the physical challenges during the event, so this is yet to be seen. Another more recent contender is Agility Robotics, which has created a biped named Digit that is capable of helping with the same dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks that TeslaBot is aimed at solving. And in addition, Agility is using their research into walking to create better prosthetics and exoskeletons for human use. Agility is currently shipping digit units for around $250,000, but they hope to bring this price down to $70,000 as they scale production. Clearly, there are already companies that are heavily invested in this space and have already started delivering units, so I have little doubt of the feasibility from a hardware perspective, assuming Tesla is able to attract talent from the industry to address these challenges. There are two high-level software problems that need to be solved here, perception and interaction. For perception, Tesla can likely reuse many of the components of the existing perception stack. Tesla Bot will feature the same eight autopilot cameras that are currently used in the cars and can basically use the same multi-camera fusion and feature detection system that the cars do. Camera footage is translated into a 3D vector space representing all the relevant information the Tesla Bot would care about. The vector representation of the real world will likely still be fairly different from what the cars use now because these bots aren't intended to walk down busy roads. However, the same fundamentals would likely still apply. With regards to the interaction problem, consider OpenAI's recent demonstration of solving a Rubik's Cube with a single hand. This was accomplished with reinforcement learning coupled with a technique called automatic domain randomization, which basically means that the problem was first solved in simulations of progressively increased difficulty, where parameters such as the size and mass of the cube, the friction of the robot fingers, and the visual surface materials of the hand were randomized in a controlled manner. This is strikingly similar to the simulation tech showcased in the AI Day presentation, which helps Tesla create synthetic data to complement all the real-world data it already gathers using autopilot cameras. Generalizing solutions to real-world problems for a bipedal robot is likely orders of magnitude more complex of a problem to solve, but given Tesla's deep investment in the AI space, I have little doubt that this problem is tractable. 
I'm glossing over a lot of details here for brevity, and my background is more generally in computer science, not robotics, so my understanding of the problem space is only surface level. Let me know in the comments if something I said was incorrect or incomplete. Within the last couple years, Tesla has clearly demonstrated that their scope of expertise goes far beyond cars and energy. So while the list of problems that need solving is rather long, I'm confident that they are in fact solvable problems. One issue that is not addressed in this video is whether we should focus on general purpose robots or more domain specific ones. This is an important question, but it's not really relevant to the feasibility problem. Assuming all of our assumptions on feasibility are correct, let's now focus on how humanity might benefit from the existence of Tesla bots operating at scale. The first and most obvious benefit is that we could start delegating dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks to these robots. Consider Amazon, one of the largest employers in the United States, where warehouse and delivery workers are subjected to grueling working conditions and timelines that lead to an extremely low quality of life and high turnover rate. This is a clear use case for something like TeslaBot, although something tells me that a partnership between Amazon and Tesla is unlikely anytime soon. At any rate, modern conveniences like one-day shipping would not be possible without a large labor force to address fulfillment issues at scale as well as the last mile problem. So automating these jobs seems like an objectively good thing to focus on. There are plenty of other examples of jobs that would make sense to replace, but an interest of time will stop there. So we'll either have to invent new jobs, for example in software, or we'll need to transition former and future potential workers to some sort of universal basic income. I'm a huge proponent of UBI and believe that our transition to UBI is inevitable, but where that money comes from is still an unsolved problem. As we continue to create more sophisticated ways to automate jobs we don't want to have as humans, though, we'll have access to orders of magnitude more resources, particularly once we start mining asteroids at scale. In such a post-scarcity world, it would likely be feasible to provide every human being with a high quality of life, but this would also involve the creation of social systems or heuristics to incentivize such an outcome. Another obvious benefit from having humanoid robots at scale is the ability to send robots on uncrewed missions to other planets in order to collect data and build infrastructure, assuming they can be modified for other local environments. Elon's primary mission is making humanity multiplanetary by colonizing Mars. The first uncrewed Starship mission to Mars will likely happen in 2024, with the possibility of crewed missions as soon as 2026. However, this timeline is extremely optimistic and heavily depends on a number of future milestones in the Starship program, both in orbit and on the moon. It is doubtful that TeslaBot will be operating at scale by 2024, but every time a trip to Mars is feasible, once every 26 months or so, the likelihood of SpaceX sending TeslaBots to Mars increases. They could be used to set up infrastructure and perform exploration without putting human lives at risk. If Elon wanted to be as risk averse as possible, Tesla bots could set up the NC2 resource utilization needed to generate fuel for return trips to Earth before humans even land on Mars. One final major benefit of having Tesla bots at scale is they could play a crucial role in one of Elon's other major bets, Neuralink. Neuralink is a company creating brain computer interfaces to help us solve some neurological issues like blindness or paraplegia with the ultimate goal of increasing human consciousness and merging humanity with AI. As seen with Agility Robotics, there is a close relationship between robotics and prosthetics, which means that a Neuralink-powered prosthetic leg or arm could benefit from the technology TeslaBot would have to offer. Furthermore, Tesla is likely on the path to creating an artificial general intelligence, and understanding the mechanisms that enable that sort of intelligence has obvious synergies with a neuroscience company attempting to understand the brain. That's it for this video. I'll be diving more deeply into some of the topics discussed in this video in the future. What obvious or non-obvious benefits did I miss? Do you have feedback or criticisms of my analysis of TeslaBot? Do you have an idea for a future topic I should cover? Let me know in the comments, and please subscribe for more content about Elon Musk companies and futurism in general.